Welcome to class four of Energy 142. In this class, we're going to go over benchmarking and load factor analysis, which will help you with task two of your project. So first, I want to go over what is benchmarking and how does it relate to the um, utility bill analysis you completed. So benchmarking in general is just a practice of comparing um, performance with the given metric. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. Basically, what we're going to be doing is comparing your schools that you've done your um, utility bill analysis of with an average school. So the real question is, um, so again, uh, benchmarking is a standard way to compare two practices by using one or more metrics. So what we really need to think about is what is a good metric to use to compare schools? And um, we're going to be going over a couple different ones um, during this class period. But basically, um, there's there's going to be, um, we need to make sure that we take into account um, many different factors of our school um, when we do this. And the big thing we're going to be taking into account is the square footage. So let's look at um, two standard metrics, um, the energy use intensity and the energy cost intensity. So the energy use intensity is up at the top here. And it's... Um, you can be different units, but basically what it is is the energy use over a given time period divided by the area of the building. So dividing by the area of the building basically says that we can, we're going to have something per, let's say, square foot in this case. So when we do that, we can compare buildings of different sizes. If we didn't divide by the square footage, if we just use the energy use over a given time period, then we really couldn't um, compare two different buildings of two different sizes. So it's the same thing with the energy cost intensity. Um, the money spent on energy over a given time period divided by the area of the building. So these two different metrics um, have, have a couple different units. The units of EUI, or energy use intensity, are usually kilo BTUs per square foot, or thousands of BTUs per square foot. And the units of energy cost intensity are usually dollars per square foot. So when you're completing your task, these are the units I want you to use. So the other thing is we need a standard building to compare your um, building to. So the Commercial Building Energy Consumption Survey, or CBEX, is a large survey that was conducted by the um, Energy Information Administration, the EIA, um, an agency you should be quite familiar with. And it's really a useful tool to compare your building with similar buildings. So you can get an average and see where your, um, where your building's at. So um, so let me show you um, sort of a demo of this website. So you, 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 might, you can follow along with me, or you can just watch this, and you can do this for your task. So let's, let's go ahead, and what we're going to do is we can see when we go to this website, we have a couple different options. Our first um, option is we can either use we can for location, because you can think about it. We're trying to compare our building to a similar building. We don't want to compare our building in Delaware to a building in California or Florida. We want to try to do it somewhere in the in the um, same thing. But I don't want to use census division. I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and view the climate map. So we can see the climate map. Um, we're in zone three climate, which is yellow. So it goes across the country like this. So in zone three. Um, we can see that you know we're similar climate to a lot of this stuff. And then let's go ahead and look at the census division map. So the problem with using census division, if we use the South Atlantic, we'd be um, grouping buildings all the way down to Florida and Georgia. So we'd be comparing um, Delaware with the average for the census division. But that's not what we want to do. We want to use climate. So make sure we use zone three of climate when you're doing this. So this is just going to, um, and zone 3 is less than 2,000 cooling degree days and 4,000 to 599. Yeah, so there we go. So that's the first thing we want to um, narrow down. So let me show you. Let's say yours is an elementary school. We can do elementary school. So, um, and you could do a lot of other things. That you, pro you might know the square footage of your building. So maybe we can narrow it down like that. And let me show you what happens when we get our results when we hit search at the bottom here. 
The problem is when you're really specific, you can, your criteria um, can have no results. So let's go back and do a new search. Again, the same cooling degree days. And let's just do um, an educational building. Let's see what kind of results we get now. So now this is a sample size of 90 buildings. So 90 buildings went into all these calculations. And we can see that we have thousands BTU per square foot. So this is the EUI right here. And expenditures per square foot or dollars per square foot. So that's the ECI right here. And you want to use the bottom numbers because that's the total for all fuels. So um, that's one way you can do it. The other thing you want to be really careful of is that if your sample size is less than 25, you're not going to get good results. So you want to make sure that sample size is more than 25. So these are how you're going to get the numbers for your um, building. You're going to do, you might want to do a little bit more um, narrowing down of your results to try to get better numbers. But basically, you're going to be using this eventually. Okay. So that's how to use the CBEX. So again, don't. If you get this, the criteria you have selected returns a small sample set under 25. Don't use that. Um, Broaden your search so you get a sample size of more than 25. We got 90 in the example I just showed. So um, another thing you're going to be using is um, Portfolio Manager. And I'm not going to go over this too much um, in this video. I, I have a lot of resources on Blackboard for you. But it's an easy to use benchmarking tool. And it gives you EUI and ECI, but it also gives the building a 0 to 100 rating. And um, as part of your um, task, I want you to figure out how that differs from EUI and ECI, what that 0 to 100 rating takes into account. Um, and it's an industry standard, so some places it's even required that um, buildings are benchmarked with a portfolio manager. Um, so, you know, most companies are using this nowadays. And you can, if your um, building does really well, you can earn an Energy Star rating for your building, which is um, prestigious, and, you know, they give you a nice little uh, plaque or window decal for you. Um, so you'll be using this for task two, and again, I'm not going to cover um, any of the resources um, here, but you can watch them on Blackboard your own way. There's PDF files, there's videos, um, so learn your own way that, that way. Um, if you don't know something as you're going through Portfolio Manager, just guess or use the default value. Using the defaults usually the easiest thing to do. Um, a lot of times what you do if you're actually benchmarking is you'd go into the building and, and find out all the answers you could. But since we don't have the time for that class, uh, just um, use the default. OK, so we covered um, EUI, ECI, and the Energy Star score. Another thing you can um, do to sort of compare buildings with, a, with you know, compare your building and see how it's doing energy-wise use is the load factor. And we talked about this a little bit in a previous class. But again, let's just review. So, Remember, the types of buildings that would have high annual load factors, high annual load factors are very flat. So that would be like your Wawa and um, other 24-7 things that are generally don't have a big peak. And low annual load factors are very peaky. So that might be something like a convention center or something that's only filled for a certain, um, or for a couple hours of the year, a couple days, or a couple weeks. So um, for a school to have a load factor of 0.8, probably would not be normal because that means their consumption would be rather flat and that means they're not really turning off their equipment at night. So um, a school with a load factor of 0.8 would not be uh, normal. So that's something you want to look out for when you're uh, when you're doing your um, load factor analysis. So we haven't learned how to calculate that this yet. So let's go ahead and look and how to calculate load factor. So there's a couple different formulas you can use. Um, load factor is kilowatt average divided by the kilowatt peak. So to get kilowatt average, you take how many kilowatt hours you used in a time period and divide by the hours in that time period. And kilowatt peak is the peak power usage in the time period. So we talked about that before. So you're going to be doing this monthly in your task. Um, alternatively, uh, you can think about load factor as the kilowatt hour used in a time period divided by the kilowatt hours that would have been used in the time period if peak kilowatts was always used. So these two formulas, the one above alternatively and the one below, will give you the exact same answer. It's just two different ways to think about it. So, um, and just a little note, load factor can be calculated for any time period which we have the appropriate data. 
So it really, it can be daily, it can be weekly, it can be monthly. So what we're going to do is do this for the a, for a 30-day period. And we're going to give this example. Um, in a 30-day period, a building uses 500,000 kilowatt hours. If the peak kilowatt during that month is 1,000 kilowatts, what's the load factor? So if we try to do this, um, we're going to use this formula, the kilowatt hours used in the time period. So that's 500,000 kilowatt hours. Then we're going to say kilowatt hours that would have been used in the time period if peak kilowatt was always used. So this is a problem you've always done. It's, you know, you have an appliance or something that uses this many kilowatts. How many kilowatt hours does it use in 30 days? So we have 1,000 kilowatts times 24 hours a day times 30 days. And that's going to give us kilowatt hours in the bottom and kilowatt hours in the top. So the units are going to cancel. So we get 0.694, or 69.4% is the load factor of this uh, example problem. So um, that's going to be the end of this class.